Hi, I'm Edie Hand, and welcome into Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles. We've got a great show for you today. It's on diabetes, which affects all of us, directly or indirectly, in this country, that's for sure. We're at Children's Hospital, and we're telling you the difference between type 1 and type 2 through Dr. Joy Atchison at Children's of Alabama. Also, with Joy Taylor, who is an educator, and she's going to share a lot of information with us on the right foods. And we have a terrific story for you from Richard Epstein, who shares his story of being a young juvenile diabetic to now in his senior years and doing some great things with Camp Seal Harris. You won't want to miss all this, so stay with us right here on Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles. Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles is brought to you in part by The Vein Guys. Better legs, better life. Enjoy the latest books from Edie Hand, a portion of sales benefit charities such as St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Visit www.ediehandfoundation.org or your local or online bookstore. Pick up your copies today. A Pocket Guide for the Alzheimer's Caregiver by Dr. Daniel Potts and his wife Ellen helps you understand this disease and get the best care possible. Go to alzpocketguide.com or any online bookstore for your copy. You're watching Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles with Edie Hand and Dr. Daniel Potts. Hi, I'm Edie Hand and welcome into Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles. We want to thank you for joining us on our website at rxhealthylife.com and we hope you'll become a fan of ours on Facebook. Today we're talking about a topic that certainly is dear to my heart is diabetes. And joining us here at Children's Hospital today is Dr. Joy Atchison. Thank you. You're welcome. Very happy to be here. Well, I know you're an endocrinologist and trying to make a difference for these kids, certainly I think you can firsthand because you are a diabetic. That's right. I have type 1 diabetes. Some people call it juvenile diabetes and I like to think that I was an adult when I was diagnosed as I was a senior in medical school. but. I have been called an old child. <laughs> um, and that was 30 years ago this year. Uh, so I started out with my experience with diabetes being one of having to take insulin and gradually, gradually evolved into a multi-shot a day where we take insulin with meals and a, a nice basal insulin. And then um, after about five years, I started using an insulin pump. And all of that is something that I continue to use in the treatment of my patients with type 1. Now that pump, and I know certainly in medical school and to be an educator to others and to make a difference, how did that change your life as being more, you know, to be able to go to a pump instead of having the shots? Well, I actually used the, um, the injections all through residency and I transitioned over to an insulin pump after my residency, actually when I was uh, trying to plan a family and to optimize the control during and before a pregnancy so I could have a healthy pregnancy. And the best that you can do with injections sometimes isn't just quite good enough for the uh, OBGYNs to, to say everything's a go. So that's when I made the transition and actually it's worked out so well with my lifestyle that I've pretty much stuck with it since then except for a few short breaks for different reasons. And we talk about and having children, what is, how would that help our viewers out there you think too that might be thinking of getting pregnant and they are diabetic? Well one thing that you need to know is that because um, so much of the organ formation is done in the very very early part of pregnancy you have to be in good control with your diabetes even before mm -hmm. even before you get pregnant when it, ha it can't be an oops oh guess what happened kind of pregnancy it has to be a planned pregnancy and it's very very important and then control of the diabetes throughout the pregnancy uh, keeps mom's health good and it also has a good outcome for the child. But I also want people with diabetes and children with diabetes to know that it's possible to have a family and they need to understand that the better that they do taking care of their health as they're growing up, the more likelihood that one day they will get to be moms and dads. Well, tell us the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 diabetic. Type 1 diabetes is a situation where the body absolutely cannot make enough insulin and therefore they have to be treated with injections of insulin or with an insulin pump. 
the cells in the pancreas called beta cells that make insulin have been damaged by a abnormal response of the body's own immune system so that it's not inherited per se. There may be an inherited tendency, but you have to, um, you have to sort of encounter something in the environment that fools the body into thinking that those cells that make insulin are foreign, just like a virus or another infection. And then gradually over time, that reaction causes those cells to lose their ability to make insulin. The people with type 2 diabetes actually make too much insulin. Their body just doesn't respond to it normally. It's called insulin resistance. So they many times may need insulin if it's been going on for a long period of time and the beta cells have just been damaged. But these people also have other options for their treatment, such as diet and exercise, or diet and exercise plus uh, pills, oral meds, or even some other types of injections that are very new and exciting. Well, I know that what you're doing of research and then to make a difference is you've got a program here and we've got it behind us is about hope for kids with diabetes. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. We have, we have decided to have a, a um, car tag made so that we can raise awareness of what a huge problem diabetes is in Alabama, particularly for children growing up with, with diabetes, both those who have type 1 and those who have type 2. And we hope that funds raised by this program will allow us to be able to have some more research opportunities, but also to train other health care providers so that new doctors will be coming into our state to learn about diabetes and also to have a greater ability to address that need and to educate other doctors, general pediatricians, family practice doctors, of taking care of children and to possibly even prevent the, the tremendous increase in type 2 disease that we're seeing in kids now. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to enlighten us a little bit about diabetes. And I know that people can go to your website at childrenshospital.org, right? And they can Absolutely. log on to learn more about diabetes. And I want you out there to know how important this is. And our entire show today is about diabetes. And coming up next, we're going to talk with Joy about the right foods to eat and some things that can help make your life better if you are a diabetic and you won't want to miss that. So stay with us. Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles is brought to you in part by Scott Crump Toyota Scion. Spring is in the air, and so are the savings during Scott Crump Toyota's Spring Sales Event. Drive with zero down, financing as low as 0%. Plus, make no payments for up to 90 days. New 2013 Corolla with navigation, 14940 2013 Camry SE, now $199 a month. Spring is in the air, and so are the savings at Scott Crump Toyota on Highway 78 in Jasper or online at scottcrumptoyota.com. At Scott Crump Toyota, we'll do whatever it takes. Hi, I'm Santa House, and I'm taking a minute with children to learn how to keep kids safe at home. This is my friend, Dr. Terry Coco, and she's an emergency medicine physician at Children's. Dr. Coco, what are your top tips for keeping both babies and children safe at home? For babies, crib safety is so important. You want to avoid pillows and heavy blankets and stuffed animals, plus the bumper pads around the crib. These can cause suffocation and entrapment. For children, toy safety is so important also. You want to make sure the toys are age appropriate for the child, plus you want to avoid toys with small parts like strings, magnets, these can be dangerous. For more information, parents can go to their local pediatrician or the American Academy of Pediatrics website or the Children's of Alabama website. Thank you, and until next time, stay safe. You're watching Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles with Edie Hand and Dr. Daniel Potts. Hi, I'm Edie Hand and welcome into Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles. We're here today at Children's Hospital, like I said earlier, and we're talking about diabetes. And I wanted to get into this right away with Joy. I wanted to thank you, Joy Taylor, for joining us here from Children's Hospital that Glad is an educator. Here. Thank you. Okay. You know, we were talking before we got started about it's so important about choices of words instead of saying the word diet we should think of it as healthy eating healthy mm -hmm. eating and some other buzzwords are instead of exercise physical activity I'm going to tell my brain that. <laughs> <laughs> 
there, I think those are just terms. When you talk about healthy eating and physical activity, it's much more positive than saying diet. It's true. Because people want diets to go off of diets. I've always felt that way. But if you try to change your eating habits for lifestyle changes so that you can better manage your diabetes, that's when you're going to be more successful. Well, well I know you said you are a diabetic also, right? I am. I'm a diabetic for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And for this food, uh, I wanted to show these of what this could mean for someone in this type of diet. So what would we, what does broccoli, is this a balanced? This would be a good balanced meal. The thing that, pe that people have to realize with diabetes is what's going to make blood sugars go up is carbohydrates especially. And carbohydrates and are foods like? Like all fruits have carbohydrates, starchy foods, bread, starchy vegetables, beans. Um, potatoes, bread, biscuits, cornbread, that kind of thing. Milk has carbohydrate in it. And then, of course, sweets and sugars and all that, that kind of thing. All that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but so, all the healthy foods. And a lot of times people think to manage diabetes, they just have to not eat sugar or sweets. And that's not true. It's okay to eat some things with some sugar in, but it's balancing the total amount of carbohydrate. And what we want them to do is eat healthy foods, eat a balance with some starches, some fruits, low calorie vegetables and also some protein from meat and fish and so on and some milk products. Is this like in moderation though for yes. a meal? Yes. Moderation um, depending too on the person if it's type 2 a lot of times type 2 diabetics are overweight they need to lose weight so portion control is very important to lose weight and that can help bring blood sugars down help prevent a lot of the complications of diabetes. Um, if they're not overweight, it's still portion control to stay healthy and maintain a healthy weight level. Well, and know, for children, of course, for normal growth and, and health. And that's why education is so important because it changes mm -hmm. at the different mm -hmm. ages and stages of our life. Sure. And we're learning things all the time, too, and the way we teach and different tips and things like that. So it's important for individuals with diabetes to keep in touch with an educator, their physician, to learn and, and be reinforced. All of us, it's very hard to change habits and we need reinforcement all the time. We know that we live with diabetes. You know, you think you're on track and then you just need some reinforcement and encouragement again to, to do what you should. And, and another thing that would help, I think, is to understand about uh, the pumps. And I know that, that you educate individuals on going, transferring, I guess, from either if they've had insulin shots to these type of pumps and how, would you explain a little bit of these different pumps and how yeah. this makes a difference? And, and let me say one other thing too before we get into okay. this, if I can. One other thing that's very important is for people with diabetes to, to manage their blood sugars, to check their blood sugars and know where it's at, I whether they're type terrific. 1 or yes. type 2. Type 1 individuals have to take insulin and they may take injections or they may transition to a pump and these are some of the pumps that we teach here. Okay. Okay, and this type is what? These two pumps here have tubing attached to them. The mm -hmm. insulin is put into the pump and the tubing is attached to the body by an infusion set, which is just a little tiny needle to insert it. There's a little plastic tubing that goes into just the like body. Just like an outpatient type thing? Oh yeah, and the patients change these every three days themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. We educate them how to do that. And this particular one here does not have tubing. The insulin is in this, what we call a pod, and it's attached to the body and then communicates How is from this. To the body? There's adhesive on the back, and you peel off the paper and it stick it to so the body. So that's really non-invasive. Well, it's still going into, um, you can see there's a little cannula here, we call it a little plastic tubing. Okay. And with all of these pumps, that little cannula goes into the body, and that's okay. how the insulin is delivered into the body. Okay, and okay. Tell, what, what difference has this made, do you think, for the diabetic patient to have To this? have an insulin pump? Yes, ma'am. Well, it means they can put on infusion set once every two to three days, um, rather than taking four to five shots of insulin a day, and just hopefully have a lot better control that way, a lot more flexibility in their lifestyle. They don't have to be quite as rigid with what they eat and their timing of, of meals Well, it's made and a major difference in diabetics' lives. Oh, yeah, tremendous. Well, I want to commend you for what you've done over these years to make a difference for diabetics, and thank you for being thank a part you. of our program today. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for watching us, and we want you to know that this more information about education regarding diabetes type 1, type 2 is on childrensal.org site, and we hope that you will stay with us because coming up next, 
we're going to pave the way with a gentleman that claims to be, and I think he is, the oldest juvenile diabetic in the state of Alabama. So stay with us. Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles, brought to you in part by Auto Techs Pink. Change your blades, change a life. Hi, I'm Edie Hand. I'm Paula Lombard. And Paula, thank you for being here today. We've got Pave the Way to make a difference with your pink wipers to wipe out breast cancer. And how can we do that? Go to our website, autotextpink.com. Make a difference and pave the way. Hi, I'm Edie Hand here at Scott Crump Toyota, and we're paving the way to make a difference for our youth. And you can too. So log on to our websites because we're, we're paving, paving the, the way. way. Make a difference, pave the way. Children's of Alabama has been taking care of kids across our state for over 100 years. The opening of the Benjamin Russell Hospital for Children allows even more patient care. It leads the country in technology and innovation, including 17 state-of-the-art operating rooms, an expanded imaging center, and the Bruno Pediatric Heart Center, just to name a few. Children provides the highest level of care in a loving, comforting environment. I hope that you or anyone in your family never needs to be a patient, but if they do, Children's is here for you. Here's a prescription for a better life with Dr. Evelyn Higgins. And welcome, I'm Dr. Evelyn Higgins, and we're talking today about diabetes. There's two types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes, which we also know as juvenile diabetes, and type 2 diabetes, which is more of a lifestyle diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is typically diagnosed later in life, and the person will be heavier. It, that's how they will appear. Type 1 diabetes is usually diagnosed earlier in life, hence called juvenile, juvenile diabetes, and they'll be very thin in makeup. The difference between the two is that type 2 diabetes is something that we can actually reverse. We now have the information through peer-reviewed science journals from the National Institutes of Health that lets us know that by eating fruits, vegetables, grains, fibers, and exercising, we can actually change this. So the power in educating and inspiring you with this information is to realize that Type 2 diabetes can be changed not through the magic pill, but also the fork and your sneakers. Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles is brought to you in part by the Edie Hand Foundation, www.edhandfoundation.org. Enjoy the latest books from Edie Hand, a portion of sales benefit charities such as St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Visit www.edhandfoundation.org or your local or online bookstore. Pick up your copies today. Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles wants to help you pave the way to a better life. Hi, I'm Edie Hand and welcome into Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles. We thank you for watching us on our website at rxhealthylife.com and we want you to become a friend of ours on Facebook. Well, we've been talking about diabetes and we've had Dr. Joy Atchison on the show from Children's Hospital, Children's of Alabama. We've also had Joy uh, Taylor on the show. We've talked about nutritional issues as well as the right pump for you. Well, now you're in for a treat on our You Pave the Way segment. We have Richard Epstein. Well, hey, Richard. How you doing today? I'm great. We've known each other, goodness, longer than dirt, right? We can't talk about that <laughs> on the air. <laughs> well, Richard, I know that you've You've had diabetes for a long time. I've been diagnosed with diabetes 56 years. 56, and we've got this great uh, poster here to prove it, that you half a century. That's correct, and back then they didn't know that much about diabetes. As the people know today, the young lady before me, they were talking about the pumps. Back then all they had was syringes, when I was up to five shots a day. And that gets kind of old when you're just a little kid. I was 13, almost 14 when I was diagnosed and there have been a lot of changes made in diabetes for the better. But what, ha what was that like for you as a kid? Well, back then, as I say, people didn't know no too much about diabetes. I would go to parties and I felt a little bit left out because I wasn't eating all the cakes and the cookies. Well, I came upon the idea I used to carry things in my pocket. I'd carry diet soft drinks in my <laughs> pocket and I'd carry diet food. I eat a little bit at home, then when I got there, I'd eat a little bit more to take care of the insulin that I was taking. Now, back 56 years ago, insulin was not discovered too long before that, but if people will follow what they learned, we'll say here at the hospital, and also we have a camp 
Camp Seal Harris. I love what you do with this. Tell us a little bit about Camp Seal Harris. And that's at CampSealHarris.org if people want to learn more about it, that's right? That's correct. Okay. The good thing about camp, there's one restriction. You have to have diabetes to go. So everybody is the same. There's nobody different. And at the camp, they teach you how to live with your diabetes, how to manage your diabetes, how to eat with your diabetes, and how to get along with people. Now, if it wasn't for the camp, 56 years ago when I started going, I don't think I would be here today. And I hate to say there are a lot of people that aren't with us today that if they were gone to the camp, they would be with us today. It makes that much of a difference in these kids. And you're a volunteer for them, aren't you? That's correct. Uh, we have quite a few volunteers and they have the camp in uh, Jackson Gap, Alabama every year. And we have the camp for two different age groups, the young ones and the older ones. Now we have quite a few older diabetics that went to camp that give up some of their time during the summer to come and help at camp. And you know we can, uh, is there an 800 number that we can put up on our screens to let people know about it? Well they can call 205-402-0415 and there's someone there that can answer your questions and if they're not in the office they have a voicemail, leave my message and they'd be happy to return your call. That's terrific. Well I uh, before we get out of here, this Triumph Man and Medicine. Now tell me about this because this makes you kind of special getting this. Well, that is a medal. Joslyn Clinic out of Boston, they give a 50-year bronze medal for people with diabetes. They also give a 75-year gold medal for people with diabetes. So I just have roughly 19 years to go and I've already got my bag packed. I'm going to get my 75 year. I'm going to have to come and take a picture of that. That'll be good. We'll all go together. Well, I want to commend you for, for what you've done to, to make a difference in your community and in our state and, and around the country because, you know, it, it begins in our community. And Children's Hospital has made such great strides in trying to help us all to be better educated uh, about diabetes. And people like you that are willing to get out there and be a, still be a cheerleader. I've looked pretty good cheerleading over to Children's Hospital. <laughs> Did you wear a skirt? I've got it out in the car. <laughs> oh, Richard, you're, you're always such a delight. And I know the kids really love that. And is there something you could say that would be of encouragement to someone that might be young and going to this, or a parent? Well. The parents need to also maybe come down to the camp and see what's happening with their children at the diabetes camp. And the children with diabetes do not need to feel that they're left out. There are more people with diabetes today than there ever have been. And I think if you'll check, you'll see there are more people coming down with type 2 diabetes because of the way they're eating habits. If they would change their eating habits, we might one day maybe get this situation taken care of. Well, thank you for taking the time and coming to be with me today and share your story and encourage people to do the right thing and go to camp. Thank you. And thank you for being a part of Prescription for Healthy Lifestyles. We've been here at Children's Hospital, Children's of Alabama. That's childrensal.org. And if you'd learn, like to learn more about camp like Richard Epstein that Volunteers is a part of, that is campsillharris.org. Stay with us next week when we have more right here from Prescriptions for Healthy Lifestyles.